going to be a whirlwind day for Donald Trump. He has uh, scheduled uh, to meet the Mexican president in Mexico before coming back and giving a speech on illegal immigration in Arizona today. Trump made the announcement just before he took the stage just outside of Seattle, Washington last night. Uh, he had a rally there, and some of you may have actually caught some of that already. I may share some of that, too, this morning. I also have some uh, news coming up a little bit later in our program. After the 9 o'clock hour, I went and walked the grounds at the Twin Falls County Fair yesterday, and I was just mentioning in my little pregame warm-up on Facebook this morning, the Facebook video, I was sharing that going to the fair is a look back in time to the way things used to be, especially about the way things used to be better. And I'll share some of that in one hour. But in the meantime, I wanted to open up on Trump today. And also, I'll tell you coming up, we have a visit from Jeremy, or not Jeremy Daly today. It'll be Russell Singleton again from Trip Family Medicine. And we'll talk about preparedness in the event of an emergency, what you need to know from a medical perspective. That's on the way in about 25 minutes. But back to Trump. Uh, Donald Trump, of course, speaking last night in Washington State. And I'll tell you what, he's not lost anything when it comes to getting a reaction out of a crowd. Take a listen for a moment to some of his comments. The policies of Hillary Clinton have produced only poverty, joblessness, failing schools, broken homes, and rising crime. And it's only getting worse. They don't care about you. What do you have to lose by voting for Donald Trump? I will fix it. I will fix it. We are going to work very hard over the next 70 days, and we're going to win this state, and we're going to win the White House. We are going to take back the White House. Now, at the beginning of that, unfortunately, though, it was clipped there slightly, but what he says, he mentions Hillary Clinton, and he's trying to contrast differences between the two of them as they head for the general election. If you have not yet seen it, the Washington Post has a poll out today that shows that Hillary's unlikability now matches Trump's and is only growing and might keep growing because of her email scandal and other issues coming out with that, as I say, a new revelation every day. Here's the thing about Trump going to Mexico. I don't think he's going to go down there and say, ah, oh, gee, Willikers, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset all of you. I don't think that's going to happen. But I think he's going down there and he's going to say to the Mexican president, how will we be able to work together on this? And Donald Trump is a horse trader. He's a negotiator. He's talked about that before. He says that when he takes office, he's going to bring in people like Carl Icahn and some of the other better negotiators that he knows in the business world to help out in government, especially when it comes to dealing with foreign nations. So my guess is he's going to go down there and say, look, this is hurting a lot of people in, in the United States who are voting for me and who are hardworking Americans but who've been let down. Now, I think you need to work with us a little bit on this if you want us to be a little nicer to you. That's what I hope he says. There is a writer today named Jason L. Riley writing on the op-ed pages at the Wall Street Journal. Now, the Wall Street Journal has, a, has a, a, an image as being a conservative newspaper, but it's technically a capitalist newspaper. That's why the word Wall Street is in the title. And the Wall Street Journal, which may have a lot of conservative op-eds on its, uh, its op-ed pages, generally, though, has supported pretty much an open borders policy. Why? Because the people who read the journal and that the journal is written for are those fat cats who make a profit by getting cheap labor here and putting you out of work. Let's be honest about that. Capitalism is a good thing when there's a, when there's a level playing field. But this is not about a level playing field. And this fellow says it's anyone's guess where Trump really stands these days on illegal immigration. He says American views, though, this is page two, and this is where I'm quibbling with him. American views on immigration, including how to handle the large illegal population, are far more moderate than GOP restrictionists like to admit. In fact, he goes on to say that even Republicans are more compassionate and uh, would not like to build a wall and deport a lot of these people. And then I wondered, what is he smoking? Because even though he's giving an opinion, and I give opinions, I respect people who do that, I know he's not writing on the front page, he doesn't cite any numbers to back that up. And the reason I mention this is because if Republicans truly, truly want a, a, a sieve for a border and they'd like to treat all of these people with kid gloves who are coming here and taking jobs away, then why last night in Arizona, they had a primary in Arizona, state of Arizona yesterday, Florida too, I believe, was another one of the big ones. But in Arizona, John McCain barely survived by the skin of his teeth in a primary, Republican primary for U.S. Senate. This is the war hero, John McCain, right? 
who served many, many, he's been in Congress, either in the House or Senate from Arizona, going back over 30 years now. And yet all of these Republicans who had such tight races in Arizona have to stand back and admire the Maricopa County Sheriff, Joe Arpaio, who was also involved in a Republican primary last night, who is constantly under assault by mainstream media and the federal government and all of the liberals in his state and really across the country for his get tough policies on illegal immigrants. Arpaio skated to victory last night. It wasn't even close. I have a great organization. I want to stick around, uh, make sure we get through any uh, problem areas. I don't desert my people. So there you go. Anybody out there who claims Republicans, that we are much more moderate when it comes to our views, when it comes to people coming here illegally, which means against the law, by the way, breaking the law, then I think Arpaio, would, uh, his victory last night, would say otherwise. And if you're ignoring what the American people are saying, that's why we have so much in the way of trouble in this country any longer, is because the elites simply don't want to pay any attention to what the rest of us have to say. Very same newspaper, Wall Street Journal, very same pages, the op-ed pages. A writer named William A. Galston says this, In democracies, meritocracy, and that means elitists for, for the most part, will always be on the defensive. Its legitimacy will always depend on its performance. Its ability to provide physical security and broadly shared prosperity, as well as to conduct foreign policy and armed conflict successfully. When it fails to deliver, all bets are off. Now, he's essentially, in one paragraph, defined the issue. People are upset because we don't win wars decisively any longer. The economy is sluggish. It's very difficult for working people to get ahead any longer. And somebody else has decided that we need all this competition from migrants, illegal aliens, and refugees. And then it goes on to say this in the next paragraph. This is what happened throughout the West. Failed wars, domestic insecurity, and uneven growth have undermined the authority of governing elites. Although the pro-Brexit vote in the United Kingdom came as a shock, it was the latest in a series of surprises that are tending in the same direction. And then he goes on to list what's going on all over Europe, where they have had upsets in various elections, and more and more people, especially when they're allowed to vote, are going out and saying, we've had enough. And to sit here and say, I read yesterday where Donald Trump, in the Appalachian region of this country, now Appalachia starts basically in Mississippi, which is on the Gulf of Mexico at one point. But that stretch, that spine of the Appalachian Mountains, runs all the way up into southwestern New York State where I grew up, about three hours north of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. That's where the Allegheny Mountains come to an end. And then there's another mountain range to the east called the Catskills. So all of those counties were settled by the same people, same economies, basically rural economies that survived, though, for a long time on various things like in some parts on mining, in some parts on manufacturing, that's all gone now. Trump's support in those counties, and there are a lot of counties because you're talking Mississippi, parts of Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, parts of Georgia, the Carolinas, Virginia, West Virginia, uh, you're, talking, uh, you're talking Pennsylvania, and again, part of New York State. See, so you're talking, I think, in the neighborhood of 100 counties. Trump won like 95 of those in the primaries, in the Republican primaries. Why did he do that? Because his message is resonating with those working people in those areas. And media keeps saying, hmm, Trump mean to Latino. Hmm, Trump mean to African American. Hmm, Trump no good. Trump racist. Well, all of those poor white folks who for generations have done nothing but build this country and work hard, how come the media pays no attention to their concerns? And certainly the Democrats don't any longer. The Democrats want to go out and sip Cabernet out in uh, Silicon Valley at these fundraisers and rake in millions and millions of dollars for their campaigns and then turn around and say, hmm, we're the party of the little guy. Baloney. 816, Bill Colley with you on Top Story this morning on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. The great, <laughs> some people might disagree with this, but the great Ann Coulter, appeared on MSDNC, of all places, with the liberal Andrea Mitchell. And she went right at Mitchell and I think took Mitchell's breath away when she was talking about some of these, some of these situations we're, we're dealing with currently in this country. And she said, when it comes to illegal immigration, this country is not, 
it, it, it's not, you know, we don't have a welcome mat out. I mean, that's what we're faced with right now. We have um, our this administration flying in non-refugees from Central America. Somehow Syria has become our problem. I mean, if Latin America is is America's problem, what, why is it? Why isn't Europe taking care of of Syria? How did how did the entire world become our problem? I don't see, you know, England and Germany reaching out to take refugees from Central America. We've just turned our country into a charity ward when I think it's time to put Americans first. And that is clear. Clearly, Donald Trump's principle. Um, he fell for the nonsense about, I mean, he was being pushed in a question, being pushed, pushed, pushed. What about the hard case? Let's, let's, let's spend all of our time talking about the hard case and never develop a speeding law. Just that one case of the man rushing his wife to a hospital and going 80 miles per hour in a 60 mile zone. We'll deal with that. We'll burn that bridge when we get to it, as I like to say. Here, here's the thing. When she said America is not a charity ward, I brought this up before. There's nothing in our Constitution that says you have the right to come live here if you live somewhere else. And the Constitution applies to U.S. citizens, not to Syrians, not to Mexicans, not to the Lebanese. That's how it works. So if we do welcome you here, it's because we may have a need for you. But with 95 million people currently not in the labor force, there's no need. Got that? We have to take care of our own. And that's not being mean-spirited. I bring this up, too, as well, because Trump is a... Well, they say Ann Coulter is inelegant when she says that. That means liberals, look, if you're confronted by a burglar, you, you got a couple of choices. You can try to sit there and say, oh, I have such a nice home here. Why would you like to smash the windows out and take all of my possessions? Or you can go up and kick the guy right square in the <clears throat> you-know-where. Which one of those do you think is going to be more effective? I'm not into this, oh, you need more elegant language to describe it. That's the liberal's way of pulling the, uh, the, the ammunition out of your hands in an argument. Meanwhile, Trump last night made an appearance on KRO, uh, KIRO radio in Seattle, since he happened to be in the neighborhood. And here's another point he was bringing up, expressing, I think, solidarity with patriotic Americans over another one of those liberal issues. That would be Colin Kaepernick. Well, I have uh, followed it, and I think it's, uh, I think it's personally not a good thing. I think it's, I think it's a terrible thing. And, uh, you know, he'll uh, maybe he should find a country that works better for him. Let him try. Oh, no, liberals. liberals are just screaming, oh, how oh, 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 dare he say, how oh, oh, dare he say he goes somewhere. Mm. I don't know, Barbara Streisand said she'd leave the country if Trump wins, solidifying my vote for Trump, I should point out. And I think a great many Americans feel exactly this way. Not everybody out there is a liberal or some sort of sexual pervert getting paid by $3 bills. We're regular Americans, and we're going to be hurt finally, once again. 20 minutes after 8 o'clock, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com at 60 right now. You know, I would say 95% of Americans are normal. And your, your folks in media just haven't caught on to that yet because most of them are, well, they'd be the opposite, wouldn't they? Hillary Clinton, meanwhile, uh, if you've heard, there's, there's like 30 additional emails related to Benghazi that the State Department has been sitting on, and now it looks like there's going to be a fight to get them to release the emails because it could well show how her nefarious activities in the background to sort of paper that over for the White House so that President Obama could win a second term because it happened less than two months before Election Day in 2012. I want to mention something about her trustworthiness in just a moment, or lack thereof. It's 61, it's 824. Bill Colley with you on Top Story this morning on News Radio 1310, KLIX, News Radio 1310.com. One week from tomorrow, I am going to be joined in studio by Dr. Christine Pickup. She's a doctor of audiology from Mount Harrison Audiology. That's in Rupert, Idaho. And she wants to remind people with advances in healthcare, people are living longer, healthier lives. But cognitive decline is still one of those things people have to be dealing with. People with hearing loss have a much greater risk of developing cognitive decline, which can lead to dementia. The greater the loss, the greater the risk. Keeping your hearing healthy is an important part of overall wellness. Knowing your hearing status and doing something about it can lead to a better, healthier life as you age. Now is the time to schedule a hearing evaluation. You can call Mount Harrison Audiology for an appointment today, the number 312-0957. Catherine Herridge from Fox News 
I was reporting last night on the Fox News Channel about exactly what's happened with the sudden emergence of these 30 new emails. And probably we're going to see the trickle just go on and on and on. You know, 30-some days, a couple of hundred another, uh, 15,000 another. And it just seems that there's no end to all of this. And it's always, well, unfortunately, mainstream media can't get around it. They have to cover it. It's continued bad news for Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton signed the statement under oath last August telling a federal court that she had handed over all her government records. But we know there are more emails, as many as 30 from Benghazi, that were found after the FBI did a forensic scrub of Clinton's servers. Fox News was told that some records come from the first week after the 2012 attack, the same week then Secretary Clinton was at Andrews Air Force Base, where the caskets of four Americans were flown home. In other words, she was out there putting on uh, a show. All right, a lie, if you will. 826, Bill Cowley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, News 1310.com. Four Americans gave their lives in service to their country. Their pleas for help were ignored. And then Hillary Clinton went out there and blamed it all on a filmmaker. Now we're going to finally perhaps get to the bottom of this because of these emails she tried to get rid of that apparently still exist. To give you a little background into how her operation works, there's a story that came out at the Weekly Standard, Stephen F. Hayes. Some of you may know him from his television appearances on uh, on Fox. Stephen F. Hayes is writing about Hillary Clinton when she was first running for U.S. Senate. This is back in the late 1990s. Her husband was still in the White House, and he had plans to go to Asia on a trip. However, Pakistan was not on the list of places that he was going to visit. I'm going to pick this up down at paragraph 3. Four days later, Hillary Clinton weighed in at a gathering at a private home on Staten Island Clinton said she hoped her husband would be able to find time to visit Pakistan on his trip. That she spoke up on a matter of public controversy was interesting. Where she did it, though, was noteworthy. Clinton was the guest of honor at a $1,000 per plate fundraiser hosted by a group of prominent Pakistani doctors in New York who acknowledged holding the dinner as part of a lobbying effort. The immediate beneficiary was Hillary Clinton, candidate for U.S. Senate. Organizers were told they needed to raise at least $50,000 for her to show up. They did. The second beneficiary, Pakistan. Two weeks after Clinton told her host that she hoped her husband would do what they wanted him to do, the White House announced that Bill Clinton would indeed include Pakistan on his trip. So, ka-ching, (laughs) ka-ching. Clinton, Inc., at work. You're on the air with Bill Colley on KLIX. Go ahead. Yeah, good morning, Bill. Uh, we all know it was a video. I mean, it was not a video. Um, excuse me. Is that guy still in jail? Do you have any idea? I'll take my answer off the air. Thank yeah. You. I, you know, I have to be honest with you. I think so. It was a parole violation of some sorts that they claimed they got him on, and it was ridiculous. We have political prisoners in this country. If that's a, There's no other way to put that. If that's what they're holding him on, because if he gets out and he starts squawking and talking up a storm about how this was a frame-up, then it looks very bad for the people in charge. And once again, these, these are the same people in the political party that claim they're out for the little guy, who they've got locked away in a cell, rotting away to cover up their crimes. I'm sorry, but I don't know how any decent American, any real American, any true American could vote for these scoundrels. If I happened to be a registered Democrat, I would be so ashamed and so embarrassed, I wouldn't tell anyone in the first place other than when I went down to Board of Elections and said, please, please help me save my soul and switch my party registration. How can any of you liberals out there defend these people? How can you defend this contact? She's hoovering up money left and right for favors. And they're locking away people, innocent people. And four Americans died begging for help. How again can you defend this? And yet you scream and yell about Donald Trump because he made a joke about Rosie O'Donnell. Well, she is. There's nothing handsome about the woman. Let's be honest. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. 62 right now. Better health with Trip Family Medicine on the way. Russell Singleton is going to be joining us. He's a physician assistant. We're going to talk about medical emergencies that you may encounter during another emergency, a disaster, for instance, of some sorts. More on that coming up in just a few minutes on KLIX.